we are good for today it's quite a lot to think about and to digest <laughs> the idea of what our leaders are doing and meeting up i mean they could have done a online video conference but and used that entire money to you know just plant trees i think that would have been way more effective but then again it's my point of view and uh, thank you for listening happy diwali uh, if you have stories uh, or you know you want to express you want to share your thoughts or ideas about global warming or the environment or climate change anything do send me an email or write to me in my social media pages that is tenzin kopal at the rate gmail.com t-e-n-z-i-n-g-o-p-a-l at the rate gmail.com or you can dm me through my facebook account or my instagram page and welcome to the show happy diwali and in india diwali is also celebrated as new year therefore happy new year we wish you all the success prosperity and happiness may all your wishes come true it's a very good time to start something new uh, usually in india if we are planning to do something new then uh, diwali is one of those times it's a auspicious time to start something new today we are going to have a very short session maybe let's say around 10 minutes because i don't want to bug you too much and uh, because it's saturday and sunday you want to chill i understand that but uh, this is very important because we recently had the g20 summit focused on the global warming and climate change and we had leaders from all over the world around 120 leaders and supposedly they had conferences regarding the climate change yeah all the information and their speeches they have been covered in almost all of the news and uh, you have all the world leaders giving long description about what they are going to do and what they are going to achieve in the coming 70 80 years which <laughs> which i think and all the young generation for at least think that you know it's if they want to do something they have to do it now as the british prime minister boris johnson says i quote if we don't get serious about climate change today it will be too late for our children to do so tomorrow uh the i think we have a little uh objection there because the young generation of today is fighting for raising their voice they are fl- coming all the way from their country to this g20 summit place to actually protest protest for what protest for the action that they are not doing what they are saying right i mean you have uh, young activists from all over the world gathering there as well But, yeah, we have just some elder people, senior people doing all the conferences and uh, talking about this and that and, you know. So, before we, before I get into the mood to talk about, you know, (laughs) my perspectives and my idea about uh, how this G20 actually was not... A successful meeting I would say because I mean yeah I mean it's pretty it's pretty sad to see you know like after the ministers prime ministers they come and they speak about how global warming affects the world and everything they still fly back to their country in their private jets and uh, not willing to take local train or you know try to you know, it's just like Greta Thunberg has said it's just blah 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 and <laughs> which is very true I, I totally support Greta Thunberg uh, yeah and 
all of these materials that I'm going to talk about is available in the internet, in YouTube, it's everywhere, you can search for it. It's pretty sad actually, you know, all these aged people coming to the conference, they are talking to each other. I mean, what was the need to come together? I don't understand. And then they are pointing fingers, you know, they did this, they did that, they did this, they did that. I mean, you have the young activists, they're all gathered, marching, protesting on the street. I mean, they are not pointing finger at anyone. They want, we want the opportunity to change our future. But no. All these ambitious leaders, they want to just talk and talk and talk and do nothing about it. I mean, why would a change require 70 years or 40 years or 30 years? I mean, why would we want to wait till 20, what was it? Uh, I mean... Even our Prime Minister had mentioned that, you know, by 2070, I think it's called. Whatever, it doesn't matter. The fact, the point is, we need to act now. And if we don't act now, then I don't know if 2070 or 2050 or 2030 is going to matter. The climate conference. Somebody of the first two days of let's see <clears throat> so basically we have around 120 leaders coming together in let's go on Monday at the start of the COP 26 launch two weeks of global negotiations to help determine whether humanity can drive forward the urgent action needed to avoid the catastrophic climate change okay so the leaders met yeah and g20 leaders summit the g20 countries are responsible for around 80 percent of the global greenhouse gas emissions and 85 percent of global gdp in agreement to end coal financing by the end of the year and to aim to contain global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius. But the final statement lacked firm pledges and failed to put an end date on the actual use of coal. They also pledged to reach a target of net zero carbon emissions by around mid-century instead of setting a clear date. Pretty disappointing, isn't it? I mean, they took their entire time, they used enough fuel to travel all around the world and finally they still don't have a, a fixed date. I mean, it's like me saying, you know, I'll do my homework in some time. I mean, that's just procrastination, basically. It's just being a lazy ass. A big pledge to cut methane emissions. Around 100 nations and parties have signed on to a global pledge to cut methane emissions by 30% of 2020 levels by 2030. Landmark commitment to end deforestation by 2030. I mean, if you look at all these numbers, it's just, you know, buy something by this date, maybe by 10 years, by mid-century, it's very saddening, it's very saddening. I mean, 124 countries representing more than 85% of the world's forests agreed to end deforestation by 2030. Among the nations taking part in the pledge are Brazil, Canada, Russia, Colombia, Indonesia, and Democratic Republic of the Congo, which holds some of the world's most important carbon sinks, forest, oceans, or other natural environments viewed in terms of their ability to absorb carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. For example, the Amazon rainforest in Brazil, which is apparently or almost destroyed because, yeah, capitalism 
so i don't understand when the government says you know we are going to minimize the deforestation because they are the ones who allowed this deforestation things to happen and out of 99% i'm sure all of these are illegal activities how did such huge scale of deforestation actually managed to happen and the government did not take any action capitalism everybody is having some money in their pockets or getting some benefits that's why i suppose i don't know i am not a scientist or a, you know a investigator i am just a normal person but yeah it's visible everywhere everywhere you go why is there the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer oh my god i'm not going to get into that okay as for india india's net zero promise india announced a net zero emissions target for the first time pledging it will become carbon neutral by 2070 my god that's like around that's 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 funny okay that's i i don't want to laugh who knows maybe i'll get arrested or something i don't know but uh, yeah this is yeah this is just funny you know like by 2070 it will be <laughs> okay i'm just going to i'm just going to take my time little bit here The 2070 target is a decade later than China's and two decades after the world as a whole needs to achieve net zero emissions in order to avoid temperature from rising beyond 1.5 degrees Celsius as per the Paris agreement and in the name of development in the name of you know making smart cities not eco-friendly cities not ecological you know environmental friendly cities no smart cities you need to have the banyan trees cut down i mean i live in baroda right and apparently india's representative or the prime minister is from baroda and uh, i've been staying here for the past 10 years now and being a local here i have witnessed the fast rate of how the city is changing totally i mean the maharaja sahaji rao royal king of baroda he was a nature lover he was also one of the main he was the person to actually introduce visual arts uh, faculty in baroda as well and as well as introducing performing arts he donated his part of the palace for the university to be so that you know all the students can come there and study so you have a person like this and then you now see that the name vadodra vadodra is actually banyan tree it's the land of banyan tree i'm very sad to say that you know in the past 6 7 years time so ma- so much of the banyan trees were cut down and uh, because you know bridges had to come there's the highway coming up yeah so i don't know 270 2070 i don't know that's like i think you know the i don't understand why even have this sort of summary because uh, okay okay i'm uh, okay next point next point absence of big emitters china largest emitter of greenhouse gas and russia fourth largest emitter of greenhouse gas were not present in the climate conference negotiations and aren't signatory to the methane pledge vulnerable countries seek help the second day of leaders summit saw a number of emotional speeches from leaders of africa and small island countries the climate vulnerable forum cvf a group that unites the 48 countries most at risk from climate change convened a meeting on the second day of climate conference calling on developed nations to mobilize finance and help the developing nations in transition to green economic and deal with the impacts of rising temperature bangladesh 
Bangladesh has recently submitted an ambitious and updated NDC to United Nations FCCC. Okay, uh, you can check that out. The country has doubled its climate related expenses in the past seven years and is now in the process of preparing a national adaptation plan to tackle climate change. Addressing the leaders meeting on action and solidarity, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina underscore four points. One, the major emitters must submit ambitious NDC and implement those two. Developed countries should fulfill their commitments of providing $100 billion annually with a 50-50 balance between adaptation and mitigation. mitigation. Developed countries should disseminate clean and green technology at affordable costs to the most vulnerable countries. The development needs of the CVF countries also needs to be considered. The issue of loss and damage must be addressed, including global sharing of responsibility for climate migrants. With the world leaders and big names gone, the tough negotiation regarding climate finance will begin from day three, largely behind closed doors. Over the remaining 10 days, negotiators from nearly 200 countries will discuss what other steps they can take to make further progress on climate change. Chaotic scenes as the world descends on Glasgow. The day started off with a popular British pastime queuing <laughs> about 2,000 delegates and journalists were kept in large crowds queuing outside the conference center with Guardian reporters noting there seemed to have been lacking of planning as no attempt was made to encourage people to queue rather than simply press forward. Boris Johnson's channels Spirit of James Bond. Johnson drew an analogy between a ticking bomb that Bond must diffuse in a film and the situation humanity find itself in with the climate crisis. Oh my god, super hot. It's one minute to midnight on the doom days clock and we need to act now. If we don't get serious about climate change today, it will be too late for our children to get serious about it. Climate optimism and illusion wants UN chief. There was less optimism from the UN Secretary General Tonio Teres, mind me if I am pronouncing the name wrong, I'm, uh, yeah, blah, 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 blah. who dismissed the suggestion that the climate situation was improving and exhorted the more than 120 national leaders present to choose to safeguard our future and save humanity instead of continuing with the addiction to fossil fuels. David Attenborough says, be motivated by hope, not fear. David Attenborough, bro, I think David Attenborough sounds cool, called in his speech at that conference for a new industrial revolution powered by millions of sustainable innovations, looking directly at world leaders in the audience. He also urged them to work together. In my lifetime, I have witnessed a terrible decline. In yours, you could and should witness a wonderful recovery. Thanks, David Attenborough. I think, yeah, positivity actually helps. Biden apologizes for Trump quitting Paris Agreement. He attempted to reassert America's credibility at the UN climate talk by apologizing for the behavior of his predecessor. We will demonstrate to the world the United States is not only back at the table but hopefully leading by power of our example. Okay, he said adding, I know it hasn't been the case which is my which is why my administration is working over time to show our climate commitment in is action, not words. Xi Jinping, no show and no significant climate pledges. Of course, the China president Xi, Xi Jinping <coughs> called, 
call for developed countries to provide support to help developing countries to do better in dealing with the climate crisis in a written statement that failed to make any new significant pledges i think everyone actually failed to make any new significant pledges i mean we don't need pledges duh. we need actions we need the opportunity to be given to the youth give it to the people who know what they are doing who know they can change something contribute something in action you know like this entire g20 summit i don't know i mean remember people this is all my view i mean i'm i am like actually criticizing but i'm also criticizing criticizing myself as well because you know i should have been there at uh, g20 summit and be protesting also not that i am an activist but i am a nature lover person and uh, i do activities regarding uh, environments and uh, i mean there's so so much the people can do the power of people why why do we need summit to you know to have this group of people coming to a place and talking and talking and talking yeah oh uh, yeah and then uh, johnson to fly back to london avoiding the train finally it emerged later in the day that boris johnson was still channeling james bond as it was confirmed he would be flying back from the climate change conference on a private plane rather than getting the train so you have it there right okay uh -huh. last but not least i want to thank you for listening till the end and this is for today's episode see you